Shalom, it is now Monday, the 12th of Nisan. I'm broadcasting here Yikutel ben Yaakov from Kfar Tapuach in Israel. And uh, today's uh, today's uh, first class is going to be about Nisan, the month of Nisan. It's a special, special month. I know people are suffering around the world, and I don't want to, God forbid, um, take away from that that suffering. We want to... We want to turn this curse into a blessing. And we know that the month of Nisan is just that type of month. That's supposed to be a month where we turn curses into blessings and where we turn uh, slavery and servitude into freedom. And when we, where we turn disease and plagues and pandemics into a great season of healing. Uh, so let's talk about this, because from a historic point of view, from a biblical point of view, there ha- there is no better month than Nisan. And we know that Adar is also, of course, a very special month. But in Nisan, we just see so many examples in the Bible and uh, and in the, in the Talmud where it is cited that this is a month where we were redeemed. I mean, the, the, the Gemara says very clearly in Mesechet Rosh Hashanah on Daf Yud Aleph, Oman Aleph, it says that Nisa Binisan Nigalu Binisan Atidin Nihigael that in the month of Nisan we were redeemed from Egypt, which is the prototype of all uh, redemptions that come afterwards, and we were redeemed in Egypt, and so too it will be in the future or in the present that we will be redeemed in Nisan. So let's hold on tight and listen to this. You'll this will blow your mind how many great uh, precedences in Jewish history. Of, of great things that happened in this month. Well, we know that on the 10th of Nisan, uh, the Jewish people had the courage and the faith to tie the God of the Egyptians to their bedposts, and that is where we get the name Pesach or Passover, because when the Jews put the blood of the, of the, of the, uh, of the Paschal Lamb on their doorposts, uh, God passed over those Jewish houses of, of those Jews that had the faith, uh, to defy the God of their masters. And that's the whole essence of Pesach. It's all about faith and it's all about redemption. And there's an inseparable connection between showing our faith and being ready for redemption and, and redemption. Because what good is redemption if we're going to throw it in the garbage? I mean, a, a parent that buys his or her child an ice cream and, and the kid throws it in the garbage so the kid doesn't appreciate it and there's no point in getting it. In order for us to merit redemption, we have to be on some basic level of faith, and, and there's no more extreme level of showing that faith and manifesting that faith than actually defying the God of your masters and tying it to your bedpost and then, and then shechting it on the, on the 14th of Nisan. So it's a very, very special day. We know a very, very special season. Uh, the word, the root Nisan has in it nes, which means miracle, but it also comes from the, the root of nit, of Nitzan, like to bud forth, and that's also about the redemption. And this is the season when the flowers are budding and everything is sprouting out, and this is a time of redemption and of healing. So we just have to figure out what we need to do to be able to reverse this curse into a blessing. We know that on this day, Chizkiyahu in Nisan, Chizkiyahu was, uh, his victory was on the night of the Seder. We know that Abraham, when he had questioned whether God would be there to redeem the Jewish people in the future in Genesis, it says that the Brit Ben Abitarim, that special covenant that God made with Abraham was on the 15th of Nisan. And we know that Abraham was victorious over the four kings that had kidnapped his nephew Lot. We know that he went out to war with his 318 servants and he was victorious also in Nisan, on the 15th of Nisan. And we know that Avimelech, who had kidnapped uh, Sarah, Avraham's wife, Avraham had told Avimelech that, uh, that Sarah was his sister. And we know that on this day, the, uh, she was kidnapped, but she was also saved. So we see within the month of Nisan, we have the bad, but we also have the redemption from the bad. We have the enslavement of, of Sarah. We have the kidnapping of Sarah. and But on the other hand, we also have the victory and the liberation uh, of Sarah. And, and and we see also that Lavan uh, chased Yaakov. On, on also, this was in Chodesh Nisan. And we see that Yaakov Avino had his 
battle with the angel, um, with the with Esau, if you will, when his name turned into Yisrael. Yaakov was injured. It was rough. He was scared. He was in a bad situation, but he came through it, and he was victorious, and this is a sign for all future generations. We see that the Jews also went down to Egypt on the 15th of Nisan, and as we've said, and you see that in, in uh, Shemot in Exodus chapter 8, uh, verse 11, that the Jews actually started their servitude on the 15th of Nisan, and it was on that very day which was converted into a blessing, uh, and when, when the Jews were redeemed and crossed the... Uh, Red Sea. Uh, we know that that was the night when the firstborn of the Egyptians were smitten. And we know that uh, it was on this day that the uh, S uh, Sisra uh, 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 lost in battle to uh, to the Jewish people uh, in Jerusalem. And we know that Sanchariv and his armies also on this day fell. And we know that Daniel, in his dreams, it was on this day. And Belshazzar, we, uh, the king, we know that he took out the utensils, the vessels of the temple on this day. He got drunk and he was killed on this day. So we see again the elements of Zedu Matzeh, the two opposites, the curse and then the blessing. But it's all in this month. And we see that the story of Purim starts on this day. That is when Ahasuerus asked to see the uh, asked to see the uh, his diary, and when he saw the merit uh, to, to Mordechai and the whole story of the of the Jewish salvation in the time of Achashverosh in Persia, also started on this day. And we know that Daniel was thrown into the den of the lions uh, um, on this night, also of the fifteenth uh, uh, of Nisan. And we also know something very special, the Ketoret, the special um, uh, sense that, um, incense that was uh, burnt in the Holy Temple. Uh, it says that when they burnt that incense in, um, in Jerusalem, it was even smelled in Jericho, where the animals would, would sneeze from the Ketoret. And this Ketoret was very, very special service uh, because there, there were 368 portions of the Ketoret which were put aside, and they did this once a year on the on, on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. They took this aside, and they would say, have this for all year, and also for Yom Kippur, and that's why there's 368 manot for all the days of the year, and the extra ones for Yom Kippur. By the way, there's no coincidence. Um, that happens to also be the uh, gematria of, um, of Corona. And uh, we know that the Ketoret was something that the Jews... Uh, 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 repeatedly used to, to redeem uh, the Jewish people from plagues. You see it repeatedly in the Tanakh when there were plagues, and thousands, tens of thousands of Jews uh, died, or, um, were killed in the plagues. You see that the Ketoret is often uh, what was used to, um, to bring about a reversal of the plagues. Um, and we talk about that in other, in, in, in other recordings, in other videos about the significance of the Mikdash and how all this connects and how that could also bring about and resolve this immediate, uh, this plague immediately. Um, we also know that uh, in modern days, the city of Tzvat was uh, redeemed in, uh, in the month of Nisan. And the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat says the following on that Pezayin, on, the, on page 87. It says that Rosh Chodesh Nisan, on the, 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 uh, uh, the, the day that the month of Nisan begins, the, that the, uh, ten crowns were brought to the world, were taken uh, to, uh, by the world, to the world. Natal Atar, atar, atar the tenth of Nisan took ten of those crowns. It's interesting because Corona and Atara is the same meaning. And um, also if you spell uh, a big Corona with a Chaf, you, You'll, uh, big Corona, you also get to the same gematria of Atara, but I'm, I'm not talking about gematria now. Of course, those are nice hints, and the Gras says that in the end of days that will be a way to decipher what's happening and to get Chizuk. But we see that uh, uh, it, it uses the word Rishon repeatedly. Rishon the Masay Bereshit, it was the day of creation, the first day of creation. Rishon, and this was the first day of the Korbanot, and it brings down a whole bunch of uh, examples in the Gemara on, uh, on that Pezayin of great crowns, of great um, majesty that was brought to the world, God's majesty and majesty of the Jewish people and of the temple 
on on uh, on this month. And let me just close by bringing down the Medrash in Shmot Rabbah 15. Um, it, it also learns from the word Rishon, it learns a lot of things. It learns that God is called Rishon, and that the Mikdash, the Beit HaMikdash is called Rishon, it's called first. And also it says, And the revenge will be against Esav, which is also referred to as Rishon. And Mashiach will come, and Mashiach is referred to Rishon as the first. And this all happens in the month of Nisan, the first month of all the months. And so we see there's a connection between the revenge we see being exacted to the nations and redemption and the Beit HaMikdash and Mashiach and the exodus from Egypt and Shabbat. And this is a special month of redemption. I want to just close with one uh, with one thing, and that is that there's, there's going to be a reversal here. It's in our hand. This curse is going to turn into a blessing for the Jewish people this and for Israel this month. This Nisan just has it has been historically. It is in our hands to do that, to turn this curse and this death and these funerals and these eulogies and this horrible, horrible pandemic to turn it into a blessing. And we know that God wants it to be a blessing. That's the way it's been throughout history. We're about to enter into Pesach. All we have to do is show our faith just as we had to do when we tied the God of the Egyptians to the bedpost. We just have to do things that manifest our faith, like observing the Shabbat, and like standing up to the nations if, if necessary, and 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 doing what we can to bring Jewish sovereignty to the mount. And that's when the whole thing started, when we relinquished our sovereignty on the mount, when we embraced and rejoiced at the Trump deal. Two days later, we got the uh, coronavirus. Two days later, the, you know, it's not a coincidence because in that deal, as as uh, Jared Kushner cor- correctly says. It would be inviting a billion Muslims to come to Jerusalem, and that is unprecedented, he says. And that's an unprecedented thing that we see in this deal. And we're rejoicing about surrendering 70% of Israel and about surrendering the, the sovereignty and the mount to have a billion Muslims come and worship on the, on the Temple Mount. So naturally, it's all connected. And the Gemara says in Mesechah Tanit on Zayin Amud Bed, on page 7 in the tractate Tanit, there must be some merit to the people of Israel because the, the rain would not be falling if our sins were not forgiven. And rain is falling in such a plentiful fashion and it's not yet over. <laughs> There's still more rain. And we're, the canary is already, uh, it's, it's a matter of centimeters, 38 centimeters from being completely full. I mean, it's overflowing in some areas on the stairs. Those of you that have seen the videos and the pictures of what's going on in the canary, this is a year of sustenance. This is a year of blessing. And this month of Nisan will turn into a month of, of disease and plague that has turned into a month of healing and redemption. God willing, the Mehra will be amenu.